I've heard uh, Ken and other people refer to the kinds of things I do as the types and stuff. Types, not going to them types. You all know what I'm talking about? I'm assuming you're all fluent in Wilburese, <laughs> which, I, which is the best language I know for this kind of stuff. You know the four quadrants? What's before the four quadrants? I mean, what do the four quadrants describe? Phenomena. Well, that's the feminine. So where I'm coming from is not masculine and feminine as types, although certainly you could use them that way. I'm I'm talking about the nature of this moment right now, as you're sitting here, if you can just relax a bit with me together, feeling this, is there's stuff happening, and you know, there's the witness of it, if you like to use those words, you probably have used those words, right? So without really getting into the nuances of that yet, which are deep and subtle, It's important to feel that you can identify more with what's happening or more with that which is observing what's happening. Well, the four quadrants are what's happening, internal and external happenings, singular and plural. All of that is the feminine. All of that is she. All of that is her dancing. Your mind is dancing as she. Every, the feminine is form, is change, is life itself. The masculine is the aspect of existence. I mean, you, you have to pull them apart. So let's say that there, there is conscious light. There is oneness, one, I mean, there's no, anything you say is immediately wrong. But as soon as that splits into two, that's what I call masculine and feminine, observer and observed. And then what you observe can be described in the four quadrants and all, all of that. Does that make sense? It's not types. Now, you could go off into what you observe and then look at masculine and feminine types. That's useful, too. That's not what I do, but that's an interesting way to apply something. <laughs> so, masculine and feminine in this moment are, are you more <coughs> identified with the witness, which has a feeling of kind of backing up? So you can kind of see it in people. I don't know if you can see me. I'm kind of low here. But people who are identified in a masculine moment, they kind of like a... And somehow they think that by the action of being, of identifying with the witness, it's a spiritual practice. It's basically identifying with half the game, or however you want to say it. Um, it's the masculine perversion. It's kind of like, yuck. <laughs> Did you know what I'm saying? Is it, uh, it's what people like Ken and I do. You know, you don't want to model it. You want to study it. <laughs> you know, um, Keep it in the zoo. <laughs> so, the feminine, on the other hand, in the moment, in every moment, this moment, is our capacity to actually identify with form. Now, I'm much more masculine, so anything I say is always going to be perverted by that subtle identification, but that's my art. <laughs> so, to be perverted. So, um, when, when you're allowing yourself to identify with the, the feminine side, the, the, that which is moving, then you find, it's not like you go, hmm, now I'm in my feminine. <laughs> you spontaneously relax as form, as energy. You feel people, you move with those people immediately. You are motion itself. There is no motive to bring that motion to an end. The feminine has no motive toward peace, spaciousness, none. I don't know, have you think about it yourself. If, well, how many of you, you know, you're with your, you're with your lover and you want to sit there in silence for three days and not look at each other. That's me, <laughs> not you, you're identified with the feminine. That's literally what I do. I spend as much time alone. Well, so, the, the, the feminine as a being I mean, when a, let's say a human, it doesn't have to be human, you could do this in dream forms, so in the subtle level, you could do this with animals, so there's different levels, we'll get to that, but when you identify with the feminine, you are immediately, in that moment, motion itself. You are emotion, 
externally, and motion externally. So when any human in here, man or woman, relaxes to consent to be formed fully, they are in that moment, what I call, and again, this is just art, I could be wrong, I don't care if I'm wrong, it's the flower I'm painting. You know, I mean, if it's inspiring, great, if you want to toss it, great. But when you identify with the feminine, you find yourself alive as light, and you relate to everyone as light. You have no desire to bring something to an end. You're not going towards silence. You know, most spiritual traditions, obviously, that we're aware of, were founded by men. The ones that we have inherited, there are plenty founded by women, but because women don't write things down and try to codify them. Well, the feminine doesn't write things down and try to codify them. They don't get transmitted intact. They're all oral tradition. So you got people like whatever, Buddha, who, Jesus, uh, you know, 40 days and 40 nights in the desert. Yeah, the feminine idea of a great time. <laughs> Why would anyone who natively identifies more with the feminine want to do these strange ass masculine witness shit stuff? So, now, uh, again, I don't, I, I speak this way for fun, really, but I, 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 I do more of the witness kind of practices. I also do a lot of feminine practices, so we, it's good to do both, it's for everybody. But I wanted you to feel emotionally what you're getting into here. Because um, we're trying to lead up to yogic sex, maybe even spiritual realization in the midst of sex. But to do that, you need to be clear about what sex is. And what sex is, is the replication through two bodies of conscious light as one, recognizing itself through another as two, masculine, feminine, observer, observed, dancer, beholder. Unless two people are willing to play those roles completely you don't even start yogic practice, you're doing therapy, which is good. I do therapy on myself and with others all the time. So again, in, in the kind of art that I'm offering you, I'm going to put a spin kind of poo-pooing therapy only to contrast it to what I'm trying to talk about. But believe me, I'm as messed up and currently working on my messed upness as much as anybody here. So I, I'm a great believer in, in skillful means and therapy, but I'm going to purposely kind of compare things to it. So, what does that mean? Two bodies, two or more bodies, one body, dream bodies, going, ah, there is no other. Hello, light. Yes, it's the dance that is happening right now. This, light dancing, sound, by light I mean all energy, capital E, capital L, you know, light energy happening, dancing, moving right now, or as this. And there's also a part that has never changed. There's a part of you right now that is continuous with your entire life. When you were two years old, that one was there. That one's there right now, even though I referred to it a few seconds ago, and everything else has changed. So the part of you that's the same is what I call the masculine side. So. To have yogic sex, you need to be able to play through your body those two forms. Now, you could be two men doing it together, two women, a man and a woman. You could do it with physical objects. You could do it in relationship to the divine altogether. I mean, there's, again, we could get into the refinements of it over time.